you did exactly what they wanted to. They were rich, they were truly rich, they were born rich. And they were used to this, this, this was their way of life. They were born to the purple, and uh, they expected that kind of treatment. There was no question about it. And they were always going to Europe, and they was traveling. So uh, they were coming back and forth, and that house had to be ready, and the grounds had to be ready. And this, in that job, there was no excuse for it not to be so. I think that they uh, gave the whole place the uh, the air and the flavor it has right now. They didn't disturb the old town. They, they weren't the spoilers. They, they, they didn't come in and just say, this is mine, like some folks do today, and say, this is, uh, I'm going to do it my way. They, they learned to live together. It's a wise thing. People could learn from it. One of the more frequent visitors to the area was Charles Lindbergh. The Guggenheim estate became a second home to Lindbergh, and following his historic flight to Europe, he stayed there and wrote his autobiography, We. Lindbergh's presence in Port Washington is but a footnote in a community rich in aviation history. Numerous records for speed and altitude were broken from planes leaving the waters of Manhasset Bay. Various planes were tested here by Charles Lindbergh and Glenn Curtis. The bay was home to the Pan Am Clipper flights, and in 1937, Pan American's first transatlantic flight lifted off these waters and landed in Ireland. Port Washington, New York is a community where past and present coexist. Everywhere there are remnants of an earlier time. A short boat ride to Long Island Sound brings you to Execution Rocks, where, legend has it, the British brought political prisoners to drown at high tide. A lighthouse was built here in 1850 to guide incoming ships into Manhasset Bay. Not far away is the Sands Point Lighthouse, the oldest lighthouse in Nassau County. And just down shore, hidden behind lush foliage, is the house of John Cornwall, one of the area's first settlers. Port Washington is also a community which has attracted well-known personalities. John Philip Sousa, writer of Stars and Stripes Forever, made his home here in the early 1900s. Lerner and Lowe came to this house on the shores of Sands Point to write Camelot. This small community on the north shore of Long Island has maintained its identity through its rich history. And although it is an area often touched by wealth and fame, it has prospered by building on its past. Saturday nights they sell chowder and ice cream and they, they would have a, a, a picnic. We used to go down there and they had stands and they sell oh, watermelon, cool. they sell ice cream, they sell clam chowder. And they had this old big iron pot and they would cook it. You could smell it all over the place. They, everything was homemade. It was country, it was country. The old free church that was built in there years ago, my grandfather built that church. And then, there's a little schoolhouse across the road, and uh, that was boarded up. I guess that was one of the first schoolhouses in Port Washington. Street church was a church that everybody went to. I can remember Nick Zicka, uh, who was a peanut man in town. He used to drive down there with his horse and wagon, and his peanut wagon. We, I used to always get ice cream off sit up there and eat the ice cream at night. Main Street, the trolley to come, and the last time that trolley ran, the big storm came, and that's why I had to walk around. And I walked in, somebody said, try. Snow drift was way up high. The powerful Katrinka, she was a big six foot two Russian woman. Spoke practically no English. She lived and worked at Bellis's Corner. On the opposite corner was a big old wooden summer hotel, the Cove Inn. The old trolley car would come down the hill, and if there was ice in the tracks, it would jump the tracks. And everybody get out and drag their feet, and then they'd call Katrinka to come and help lift it back on the tracks again. Now, years ago when I was a kid, you had no such thing as garbage collection. The boys used to go out in the yard and dig a hole about six foot deep. And in fact, in them days, you didn't have too much garbage left over. 
because what Mama cooked today was made into hash tomorrow. <laughs> today, Port Washington is the very definition of modern-day suburbia. The waters here, once filled with baymen fishing for their livelihood, have become a recreational harbor for thousands of boat owners and sunbathers. Main Street, once crowded with only the dust from horse and wagons, is now a bustling retail center. Yet, despite all the modern conveniences of the 20th century, it is this small waterfront community's past that continues to influence its future. <laughs>